Shook it up. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to my new dressing room. I know I'm in the dressing room because I do have a dedicated new kind of YouTubing office space that I will be using, but it's still half in boxes and we're waiting on our desk to arrive because we're in the new house. We now live just outside Shrewsbury. We love it here. I'm just gonna quickly catch you guys up because you're probably wondering, and a few people have messaged me on Instagram and on YouTube saying, when are your videos coming back? What's been going on? and kind of worrying about me, but there's no need to worry because I am back because I just took a little bit of a break from being all in on social media and on YouTube and documenting my life because I just needed a break. I was struggling a bit with anxiety. I was struggling just emotionally. And I know you all love to hear when YouTubers and people on social media are having a hard time because it obviously shows you that we're human just like you guys and we are human and that's the reality of it but I don't like putting all that negative energy out into the world I don't want to get you guys down and I feel like if I was speaking about it too much I was actually just giving fuel to the fire of negativity and I just wanted to be able to work through what I was feeling get past it and move on. And I have moved on. And how I did that was by taking a little bit of a break from social media, concentrating on myself and what I wanted to do to make me happy and not focusing on other people. I know it sounds really selfish and self-indulgent, but sometimes you just need to look at what's making you happy, what's making you unhappy. And if the unhappiness is outweighing the happiness, that's when you start to feel down and that's when you start to look at all these aspects that are dragging you down and dragging down your mood and I think I have gotten through it one of the first things I did was I made the decision not to do another bodybuilding competition I just felt it was putting a lot of pressure on me mentally emotionally all that because I was obviously having to step on scales every day look at myself feel down about myself and as you may or may not know from watching my previous videos I have had issues with binge eating and eating disorders in the past and I could just feel myself getting back into the binge eating mentality. So I decided and I made this decision about two months ago and I just thought I'd do it without telling you guys and just see how I fared. I decided to stop tracking my food for a couple of months and just see how I go. I am still very pro tracking your food and keeping track of your nutritional intake because it is important to know where you're at if you aren't reaching certain body goals whether it's to gain weight lose weight gain muscle strip back fat whatever your goals are the main way to do that is to track your food and to see where you're at and then make adjustments from there and i just felt like I know what I'm taking in every day and I was getting obsessed by the numbers. I was getting obsessed by the numbers on the scales every day, weighing myself and I was getting obsessed by hitting my numbers perfectly and I suppose I am quite a perfectionist so when I went over by maybe a gram or two I just felt like I had, I, I felt like I'd failed and then there was days where I was full but I still had to eat a certain amount of protein so I just kept eating which led to a binge as well so it was just a vicious circle I decided to stop tracking just for a while just to take the pressure off my head and to be honest I don't feel like I gained a massive amount of weight I don't feel like I lost weight anything like that I just felt like better mentally and that was the most important part maybe I don't have the super shredded physique that I had running up to my competitions but as I've always said that is not maintainable and um, I did have that goal and it's okay for sometimes those goals to slip through your fingers and to set new goals and that's what I've done. I also stopped weighing myself so right now I don't know what I weigh and that's okay because I still fit into my clothes, I still feel comfortable and even if I didn't, I can just pull back my food a bit. Now, to be honest, since we were in LA, I did overindulge on a lot of crappy foods. There was a lot of McDonald's, there was a lot of cheaper foods because in LA, it's very expensive to eat healthily. And now I understand why it's so easy to become fat in the USA because they just make it so expensive to hit your goals. Lex and I went to the supermarket to buy just the basics for breakfast and for coffees 
and it was absolutely extortionate. It was cheaper to buy a full Happy Meal, KFC, Zinger Meal, extra large than it was to buy a pack of ham. How does that make sense? So for you to cook your own food and be healthy and even eat out in the healthier restaurants was a lot more expensive than actually eating at KFC and the cheaper alternatives that aren't that healthy, aren't that nutritious. You're not going to hit your macros that easily in these places. And yes, I overindulged in that food because it was damn expensive to not. And I was enjoying myself because it was a vacation. And that's okay too, because you're allowed to gain a couple of pounds when you're on vacation. You're allowed to enjoy yourself. You're allowed to enjoy treats. I didn't go crazy, but I had meals out. I had fried chicken. I had fries. I had alcohol. I had ice cream. And that's okay, because you are allowed to enjoy food. You're allowed to enjoy your life. So this week, I decided I'm going back to track my macros. And because I've taken a two-month break from tracking my macros, I felt great about it. I didn't feel obsessed with the numbers. If I went a couple of grams over or under, I was like, meh. And it just was like, I reset my own goals and what I wanted to do. And that's why I wanted to come on here and tell you what I've been doing and tell you where I'm at. Because my physique doesn't look shit. I'm back training in the gym. I'm back feeling good training in the gym. Because I got to a point where, yes, I was still training four or five days a week, but no, I didn't enjoy it. And no, I didn't get any satisfaction out of it. I came home and I still felt like it wasn't a good training session, but I still went. And that is one thing. When you have been training in the gym for six years, like I have, you can go in and do a half-assed workout and it's still a workout. Now, sometimes you need to reset yourself, reset yourself mentally and physically just to go back. And now I'm in a fresh gym, in a fresh environment, and I feel pumped to go to the gym. I'm enjoying my sessions. I'm not doing anything crazy. I have lost a lot of strength from where I couldn't train to my full capacity. There was a lot of things contributed to my negativity internally. And they're in the past. Because I was thinking about it one day as I was walking the dogs. I was looking at the leaves falling from the trees and I was thinking about autumn and then about how it's going to get into winter and it's going to be cold and then it comes into spring when all the buds start coming out and all my favourite flowers start to come out on the trees and the bushes and then it comes into summer where we have the sunshine, we've got the long days, we've got barbecues and I feel like sometimes your emotions and your emotional state is kind of like the seasons. You can have your dark days where you're feeling really down and where you feel like it's never going to be good again but then the spring and the summer comes and you get out of that and I know that's how I feel that it goes circular but hopefully this time I've taken myself out of my negativity because I actually went to the root of the problems and really looked at them and looked at what I can change about myself so I don't feel that way again so I've been talking more about how I feel I took a break from social media and I'm not going to get into that rut on social media again of comparing myself to others and constantly looking through pa people's pages and scrolling if you find yourself doing this on Instagram Sometimes I, I, I'm doing it and I'm not even taking it in. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What am I wasting my time doing? I'm not telling you to stop on Instagram because then who's going to be looking at me? No, you don't do that. But if you find yourself scrolling, put your phone down. Go out for a walk. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Have a biscuit. Do something better than scrolling on your phone. All it's doing is making you feel miserable. And that's what I've done. I've taken a step back. I'm only putting up the content that I want to put up and I'm not gonna be forced to put anything up. I don't wanna feel like it's an obligation that I actually enjoy what I'm doing. So hopefully from here on in, I will have more positive content for you guys because I do have a plan. I want to focus on teaching you guys how to eat better, how to feel better, how to be healthier. And that is my goal. And that is why I went on vacation. I took a break from it all, but I'm back. I'm back for you guys. I'm back for me. And I'm back for everyone in my life that felt that I was slipping away from them. 
I'm back and I'm me again and I feel good and I'm getting there every day. I wake up a little bit happier, a little more pep in my step every day. I feel grateful for my life and that's what is important. Feel grateful for what you have, even if it is the smallest thing or the biggest thing in the world. You could be a millionaire, you could just have the cutest little kitten in the world. Just be grateful for it because life is a blessing and we are all blessed to have a life, whatever that life is. And all you can do is set yourself goals and try and achieve them as best you can. And one thing I will say is that being a better person yourself will attract better people. Don't be that person who sits there thinking negatively about other people. Be that person who thinks the best about other people and who people look forward to seeing because you are a positive person in their life. And that's what my goal is, to be a positive influence and a positive force within people's lives. So they look forward to seeing my videos. My friends look forward to seeing me in person. They want to talk to me. My husband looks forward to me coming in from the gym so I can tell him about what a great workout I've had. And that is my goal. So now I'm going to leave you here with the footage from when Lex and I went to Disneyland, or Disney World, I'm not sure which it is. It's the one in California. We went there, it was amazing check it out and check me next time in my next video. Thanks for coming back guys. Welcome to LA. We are in Los Angeles. We are staying near Venice Beach in this really cute Airbnb. This is my Halloween attire because today is Halloween. Tomorrow is Lex's birthday. We've been here for two days. Just recovering from a cold, recovering from jet lag, but I feel back to normal today. A little bit stuffed up, but way better than it have been. We've moved house, I will update you on that in my next vlog. But for now, we are going to Disney for Halloween. Halloween at Disney, will it be worth it? So we are at Disney, and I can't wipe the smile off my face. And one of Lex and I's subscribers, Matt, hooked us up with passes to come. He's been following us for years, and he got us three passes to come to Disney. And it's Halloween. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's like, it's all done out, like Halloween-y ones, because tomorrow it will literally change over to Christmas Disney. Really? Yeah, that's why I wanted to come today, because oh. it changes tomorrow. So we have to experience all the big jack-o'-lanterns, and it's just so cool and Disney-esque. <laughs> And I don't like roller coasters, so this will be fun. unenjoyable experiences of my life. My ears have popped, I cried, I kept on saying I don't like it, I don't like it, I want to get off. And uh, that's me done with Disney, bye! <laughs> we are not going to Indiana Jones. Oh come on! No, you can do that by yourself if you want. I want to. Yeah, I'm not doing it. So we have Googled the least offensive, nauseating. Do it if you want. Are you with me? Not really, I might just go get food. You can't come to Disneyland and not go on rides. I'm gonna, I said if we walk through, we're gonna go to parts of the Caribbean. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this. I'm hungry, but we are going. No, you're not hungry, what are you? I'm hungry. Hungry. 
You're a hangry little bugger. I am a bit grumpy. A little, um, just a little bit. And we're going to go to the haunted mansion because we're avoiding sick inducing ones. It's done out like the nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> Was the nightmare before Christmas that rolled through the house? Not a creature was peaceful, not even the mouse. This year he's decided to play Sandy Claus. for a long time but that was fun and now I get to eat what? <laughs> what? that's the question eat a burger still have not yet when you sit that I'm like going on Indiana Jones <laughs> I will report as to how nauseating it is I survived Indiana Jones aren't you proud of me Lex? certainly proud of you a couple of times you didn't seem too proud of yourself. Well, I only did it because Lex wants to do it, and... But you still did it. He's proud of the fact that I actually still did it, but... My hair is not looking at quite so curly. I still have my horn on. I still have my horn on. And <laughs> um, we just had burgers and fries because we're at Disney, and that's what you do at Disney. And we're going to go and do Star Wars now. Star Wars calls 3D simulator. I've never watched Star Wars. Get out of the park. Get out. <laughs> I want to go to Mickey's house. Night has fallen on Disney, as you can see. And it's all lit up. And we are going to head home to go get some dinner. Uber. Get an Uber, get some dinner, go trick or treating. Hope you enjoyed the Griffins Disney. Disney Adventures. Cause if I only had a hundred fans, I'd take them out to dinner, talk about the people that we used to be. If I had a hundred fans, I'd buy them all the parents, ain't nobody paying, I'd be buying the drinks. And we would party, and we would dance, and we would throw up all them hands until they turned to clouds. Yeah, I got you now, if I only had a hundred fans. Life's too short to be an asshole.